Okay, so here we are with the next installment in our Power Platform series, the deep overview, going through all the different technologies that make up the Power Platform. Uh, as you saw in the previous video, we did a deep dive in Power Automate because Power Automate just solves for so many different scenarios. In this case, if you look at the whiteboard, next in line, we actually have Power BI. I'm going to skip over for Power BI for now and go straight to Power Pages. Now, Power Pages, this is something that is still in public preview at the time of this video, but I wanted to skip through it and focus on the Power Pages because I think it has a very interesting use case that I think really solves one of the gaps that a lot of the different technologies do not solve for to date. Now, with the exception of the Power Apps Portal. So let's talk about Power Pages and how it relates to the Power apps portal and what are some of the use cases that will work very well in the organization. So what we have here is the five technologies that make up the power platform. And prior to the power pages, underneath power apps, you had uh, Canvas apps, you had SharePoint custom apps or SharePoint form custom apps, and then you had uh, power apps for Teams. And then finally you had well, actually not finally, you have two more. You got model driven apps. And then finally, but not least, you had the power apps portal. And you would notice that the power apps portal, which is a, a denominator of the power pages was all encapsulated or encompassed under the power apps technology stack. But now when it comes to the power pages, Microsoft has decided, and I think they decided this because they hit the home run to make Power Pages it as uh, one of the family that makes up the Power Platform. And I think from a Microsoft perspective, for them to give Power Pages this type of weight separate from Power Apps, even though it is a derivative of the Power Apps portal, meaning that under the hood, you're actually it's actually ran on top of the Power Apps portal. And what they've done was created, what Microsoft has done is created a lot of no code and low code templates and a different uh, development experience or a different studio experience to develop the power pages. Right. So I so I, I kind of want to pause here and kind of show how power pages fit within the power platform family and more importantly to show how it is derived from the power apps portal. So let's talk about the use case scenario. Why? Why, why is the Power Pages so important? Now, Power Pages, let's take a look at some of the most common use case and what are the gaps and how we're kind of halfway solving for this in today's world. So here, we're gonna have your organization and then on this side of the line, we're gonna have the internet. Now, the, the main difference between the internet and the organization, and now don't get this confused with uh, the line that I drawn before, because this, this black line is very familiar to us, especially if you've been watching the videos in this Power Platform deep dive series, the black line usually represent on-prem on the left and then Microsoft 365 on the right. But in this scenario, it's really looking at the security posture where your organization is on the left, which includes M365 for your org, on-prem for your org, your enterprise, single sign-on organization, everything for your organization. And the key factor in this org layout is the fact that everyone are, is going to be authenticated users, right? So you're going to have authenticated users. Authenticated meaning that they're going to be part of your Azure AD or your local AD but you, they're name users managed by your IT firm, managed by your security firm uh, department, and they're part of your organization. On the flip side, you have the internet, and now you're gonna have a subset of users, right? So you can have users that are anonymous, you're gonna have users that are trusted, and then you're gonna have users that are federated. Okay, so what, what do I mean by these different personas? And there may be different names for them, but bear with me as I kind of highlight the, uh, the differences between the two. So here on the internet, this is going to be someone outside of the organization, right? Which is denoted by this dark line here in the middle. Now, a trusted user could be anyone from 
uh, a B to B. So there are a known supplier, there are a known customer, there are a known vendor. They are under some type of contract, and there's some contractual agreement that you're going to do business. They have some type of authentication, and you kind of trust them inside of your environment. And that trust today, before the Power Pages, is done especially in the M365 world, as a guest account, right? And this guest account could be a guest user within Microsoft Teams. It could be a guest user for a folder or file share within your OneDrive. It could be a guest user within the SharePoint site, library list, so on and so forth. But they come in as a guest account. This is a vetted user. There's some type of an agreement that says, yep, we trust you. Come on into in our environment. We're going to wall you off. We're not going to give you access to everything in, in the organization, but you will have access to XYZ because it serves some type of business purpose that we have um, a relationship with. Now, the Federate user, usually this comes with those uh, scenarios where uh, you have an organization that acquire another company. And usually through that acquisition, there is a time frame between that before that company is fully integrated within your org and they seem like a native user within the organization. So you usually kind of bring those in as federated users and that federation could be in Microsoft terms could be an Azure AD B2B scenario or in a local AD, it could be a federated user to where you can see into their organization and you could define the trust between the two uh, active directories, okay? And then you have the anonymous user. And for the anonymous user, you see from Microsoft 365, there is no scenario, there is no security posture or scenario to where you can make anyone who is not identifiable access to your organization. But this is, again, achieved by some type of sharing, and it's usually through the share link, especially within SharePoint. In this share link, it says anyone who, with this link, uh, can have access to wherever this thing links to, right? And that could have be access to a folder, and then you allow anonymous users, anyone who have access to that link, to have access to that folder and every file within it, right? So that's how you kind of share that. And you see this is a non-starter, especially from an InfoSec perspective. You really want to have named users on the other side of this equation to where you can say, you know, and it's that level of accountability, right? To where you can say this user should have access to this file and their name user versus something that could be shared organically or kind of shared in, in a uh, viral way, meaning that, you know, the link is forwarded, forwarded, forwarded to and all types of people and then the sharing gets out of control. So usually we don't do that scenario. So what's really missing? So if you look at the legacy before Microsoft 365, SharePoint Online, especially for most of us who came or have a history with SharePoint on-prem, we really developed SharePoint or deployed SharePoint in three main scenarios. We deployed them as a public facing internet an intranet, which is probably the most popular, and then an extranet, where you know you have authenticated users or trusted users that will have access to a portal. We didn't give them access to the entire store, everything in the organization, but we kind of fed them the key pieces of information and documents that they needed access to secure within their organization. And that's the scenario I believe the Power Pages really solve for. Now, with Power Pages, uh, because if you do this extranet or this really external, external to your organization type setup, you now have the ability to solve for many of those sticky situations that where you need to interact with clients, you need to interact with vendors, you need to interact with partners outside of your organization, but you want to do that in a safe way. Now, there's also a scenario where, and that's more of a B2B, right? This is a business that have a relationship with another business. Well, what about the scenario where this is a business that have a relationship with an individual? Now, the individual would need to authenticate themselves over some type of authentication method. And this is where the scenario really starts to fall flat on their face because as an individual, Microsoft is not popular, popular yet, to where individuals are really hinging on their Microsoft identity outside of an organization or outside the relationship of an organization. A prime example, look at this scenario. Imagine you're onboarding a new uh, candidate, right? Or a new employee. 
when you look at the onboarding process, we all know there is a scenario where that user has not yet been provisioned a Active Directory account or Azure AD account or a Microsoft 365 account, whatever synonym you want to use, um, it, 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 along with all these pre-onboarding activities, right? So they went through the, let's imagine they went through the resume process and now, you know, you vetted them. It says, okay, out of these 20 resumes, these are the five candidates we want to interview. That interview process there's so much activity. There's so many logistics pieces that you have to account for to bring that in. And this is where the power pages can really help out. Now, imagine this user is not yet authenticated. We covered that. They still need, there's still a bunch of logistics, right? You have to schedule the uh, virtual interview, the in-person interview, maybe give them directions and uh, addresses to where to go for the interview and maybe if it's downtown information instructions on what to do about parking and so on and so forth so you have this user that's going to encounter all of these different activities prior to their first day of work right and this is the vetting period and this is where power pages really come to play now power pages you can right you can spin up an external page or external external website, right? And with this external website, because we want this to be authenticated, remember those different personas I showed you, the anonymous user, the trusted user, the federated? Well, this is gonna be a trusted user, right? They're, they are a candidate, but you need them to authenticate, right? Because there's information that's only pertinent to them and it's secure and available only for their eyes only. And they may be sharing some very personal identifiable information like birthday, their social security number, their backgrounds, and so on and so forth. Like all of that information sharing, you want to do it in a secure way. And more importantly, you want to do it in an authenticated way to where only that user have access to that information when they're in the internet zone, right? So this is where power pages really come to play. You can spin these up, these pages, uh, really their sites. And not only can you spin up a site, you can also spin up a site with uh, some level of security. And this security is going to be beyond the Azure AD security. Again, Microsoft has not yet penetrated the market to where as an individual, I'm hinging on a Microsoft or Outlook.com account. I'm more, you know, I'm more accessible, ex you know, wait, what's the word? I'm more expected to have, I can't find the right word, expected to have a Google ID or Gmail account or a Facebook account or a LinkedIn account or any other social media account that I can hinge on. Or I may want to create an account with my own personal email address, right? So with that, now Power Pages allow for those authentication methods beyond Azure AD, which makes them really set up and user-friendly and a much better experience when the collaboration or interaction is in the internet zone and you want to still bring that information in your M365 or your organization environment. That's the power of the Power Pages. So again, this is still in preview. The licensing still needs to be worked out, but this is my first take on the power pages and what I feel, you know, is this a viable option? Is it better than the Power Apps Portal? Again, the Power Apps Portal was supposed to solve for this extranet or external outside of the organization um, uh, experience or use case and still have information brought back into the organization, right, uh, via Dataverse, right? And the data versus is really the glue or the conduit between your organization and the internet and the information that you provide out as well as the information that you receive in. And as we know that, and this is why I think Power Pages really warrants that activity or its own special icon with the rest of the technology stack that re represent the Power Platform because Power Pages now interacts and integrates well with all of the other technologies 
within the Power Platform. Okay, so let's look at this in practice. Here, okay, now it's time for demo. Let's look at this in practice. So let me go to Power Pages, which is preview. This is the uh, Power Pages dashboard. And here where you says my sites, these are all the, I don't know why they call them pages. That could be uh, misleading in a sense, right? Because when you create the, uh, a site using the Power Pages technology, you actually are creating a site. Now, when you create a site, you're going to be given this subdomain that's, that's going to write within the Power Apps portal, right? It's still held on to its legacy name. This may or may not change in the future. I don't know if Microsoft was lucky enough to grab Power Pages or not, but uh, you're going to get a subdomain, but you have the option to connect a custom domain. So you can have this a really qualified domain. So this could be um, newcandidates.deshawn.com or www.deshawn.com deshawncandidates.com or whatever the case may be. So you can connect a custom domain that will override this um, C name or this uh, virtual name uh, in the way. Okay, so outside of that, let's look at the preview. So if I look at preview, this is a template that I've downloaded and I can preview this in desktop mode. Let's take a look at the desktop and then we'll take a look at the mobile experience. Now this, Microsoft is doing something very, very interesting behind the scenes. Now they are actually leveraging the bootstrap framework, which is very refreshing and is very, I wanna say alarming, but it's very interesting to see what they do with this bootstrap framework understanding that they have the Fluent UI framework, which was a, a, another thing that we as developers, especially as uh, SPFX or SharePoint web part developers had to learn and embrace. And now we see a new product that's being rolled out that's really embracing the industry standard bootstrap. Very, very interesting, right? And it's refreshing because now that you know that once you build your Power App pages or your Power App site within uh, this technology stack, you're going to be with a more proven, well-proven, more trusted, pretty much vetted UI framework that's going to be both desktop and mobile friendly. So you have one instance of, the, of this portal and you can use it in multiple device scenarios. Very refreshing. So here, uh, this is a template uh, where you can, uh, I'm gonna click book now. You can set up a meeting with uh, some type of financial in, uh, uh, agent or investor at a bank. And here you can ask, you know, I want to talk about investing and I want this investing to be on an IRA. And then you can set up a branch and you can put in the zip code to search for a branch. Again, this is all a template. And as you can see, all of this behind the scenes, my guess is all of this is driven by Dataverse. You know, that whole, you know, mapping of which branch is responsible for which zip code, that's all gonna be stored in Dataverse and you select the, uh, the branch that you wanna have the meeting at, and this is gonna process. And then here I can say, I wanna meet with a specific uh, representative at this branch. And again, this whole mapping to this branch is gonna be done. And this is, excuse me, this is extremely powerful. Cause as you can see, we know every day, all day, we can create that relationship internally, right? It could be a SharePoint list, it could be a Dataverse, a tables, it could be, you know, a, you know, a parent-child uh, table relationship uh, with branch and zip codes and representatives per branch, per branch, so on and so forth. Uh, very, very simple to do internally. Now we are exposing that functionality and that capability externally in a bootstrap framework way that makes it both uh, usable in the desktop as well as mobile apps. And, and my friend, this is what I would consider a major, major game changer. So here I can select the day, and from that day I can select the, the, the available time. Now this, this UI, right, this feature or capability, right, looks very trivial and straightforward. But best believe, behind the scenes, how you do this is probably uh, as magic as a magician on its best day can can be. And I say that to say, I don't know how you will pull this off, right? 
it, you can, it could be something very simple to say, we only do client meetings between this date, this time, and this time on these particular days. But how do you say that someone's available? This could be very interesting. Now, you can get very elaborate in integrating this where Power Automate, uh, maybe like a group, and then have like a group calendar and someone assigned to that calendar to where you force them to be available during this particular time stamp, whatever, whatever the case may be. Again, but very, very interesting. Again, this is allowing you to really use your creativity behind the scenes to make this experience very fantastic. And I'm just blown away. Like even this example here is very mind boggling, boggling because... If we brought a consultant in to build something like this, I mean, you're talking forty, fifty, even a hundred thousand dollar budget for something like uh, something like this. And now you're putting this in the power in the hands of an app maker with low code, no code tools to where an app maker who really understands the the business process, or even a fusion team where you have a collage of an administrator, a pro developer, and then the app maker collectively building this this solution is extremely game. This is a game changer. This is really a game changer. Okay, so I go ahead and put in my information. Let's say we call him Des Clark, and I'm putting my Clardo at o365.com, right? And I'm doing I'm doing all of this anonymously. I didn't have to authenticate, right? And I love this phone type because the fact that I'm I'm asking for phone type. If you select mobile, that opens me up to allow to SMS message you on updates or confirmations or any of the other things. And again, you're dealing with someone who may not be checking their personal email on the day to day. So this mobile and SMS text messaging takes it to another level and really enhances your communication capabilities with this individual. Okay, so now that this is processing, it's going to do something. Okay, very cool. Very, very cool. You know, and I think the user experience is spot on. I get a confirmation of everything that I enter, all the options I selected. And now I'm just send a lot less note. Go ahead and hit submit. And I don't know if this is the, if this is really designed to send me a confirmation email or what the case may be. But look at the, the, the directions. This is gonna take me to a Bing map. On my mobile device, this would be absolutely helpful. Uh, if I wanna add this to my calendar, I have an ICS. I can now go into Outlook, double click that. It will automatically add it to my calendar. Very, very cool. And, and you know, it's just one of those things that you can, it, it, because it's a template, you can one, just reverse engineer and understand how this was done. But two, you can leverage the art of the possible and really tailor this to your own needs. I mean, this can be setting an appointment with some type of rep for a product or service that you sell and grab, getting the, the needed information for them. And because of the information that you grab, you can automatically drop them into a funnel uh, pre and post meeting time. Absolutely fantastic, right? Potential clients, candidates. I mean, this is this is fantastic. This is fantastic. Okay, so let's look at Outlook. Let's see if we receive the email confirmation or not. Nope, I got a confirmation that my site this is me setting up my power app site. Let's look at my junk folder. Nothing is there. Okay. All right. So no email confirmation. Okay. Let's take a look at and see what this looks like from the mobile device. So what I'm going to do is switch over to my mobile phone. There's a QR code. I can scan this. Okay. So now let me switch over to teams. Okay. So now you can see that. And this is what it looks like on the mobile device. Again, because they are using one of the most trusted industry standard frameworks for responsive design bootstrap, this becomes really, really straightforward. And here I am just kind of going through the same options and then I can select a branch and then they kind of ask me 
my information, so on and so forth. So the fact that you can create these, um, and I'm sure that there will probably be, you know, hundred. I heard that there are, you know, plans for hundreds of templates for these particular sites. That's really going to take this to another level. So again, imagine you're interacting with a potential candidate that you want to that pass your resume process your initial vetting process they made it to a round two and now you're gathering information for them to come into the office for the interviewing process you can communicate with them uh, outside of your network you can communicate with them uh, all the way through the interview process up to accepting the offer and create an experience to where they come to these portals accept the offer letter, then that triggers the onboarding process internally. Again, if you go back to the whiteboard, the glue is going to be this dataverse. So all the information that is displayed and captured on these power pages or power pages websites uh, would then be stored in the dataverse. And then obviously, obviously, you can now take a power automate workflow and then trigger any downstream process to do whatever internal process you need to do, right? So again, this is for candidates, but imagine if you are a supplier and then you have dealerships out in the wild. These are very common extranet scenarios that we will create for external uh, customers or clients. And what they would do is they would authenticate and I can show you this authentication options here. So if I go into the Power Pages Studio, let me just show you how super awesome this is. Now you can create, basically what you would do is create one page, immediately have them to authenticate, right? You can then have them authenticate and look at all of the out of the box authentication options that you have. So you can have a local sign in, meaning that you can allow them to create an account you know, you remember when we used to have the SQL, what was it, the SQL membership provider? You remember that? And uh, you will use SQL to be your local authentication mechanism, and they, they can create an account with every email that they have and create a password, and then that will sometimes or not be encrypted in that SQL database. And that was your authentication method for, again, extranets. So we will put that SQL membership provider on top of the SharePoint extranet. And then once they pass that, then that will authorize them to get access to any. So that will be local. And that was a pain in the butt. Like who wants to create a yet another username and password? So it would be fantastic if we can use some of the most popular social media ones like Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, Twitter. Again, not yet. But, you know, it's fun to have that uh, as an option. But, you know, it's, it's just, you know, you have all of these. And then you got B to C, again, not yet. We don't have that. Like, no one is hinging their personal information on, you know, Outlook.com or whatever the case may be. I did have an MSN account. Remember MSN account? Remember when, uh, <laughs> this date me a little bit. Remember when uh, you can go to, like, a Best Buy or some type of appliance store that sold like a bunch of TVs and dishwashers and uh, washing machines. But then like all of these dial-up service providers want to sell their dial-up service. So they give you like this crazy, crazy um, rebate on these personal computers. And then that's when I got my MSN because Microsoft, I guess, was at the time running a special to kind of get you into a gateway, right, uh, PC setup. Uh, I remember it like yesterday and then you like roll to the to the checkout and you had this huge cart full of your desktop your monitor and then of course the sales rep will sell you on like the best surge protector and so on and so forth uh, the, the glory days but anyway no one's hinging on Microsoft for their personal accounts uh, maybe I don't know but you know and then you got uh, Active Directory uh, what I assume would probably be a B2B as well as your local AD. Now, here's another scenario. You can create these power pages to help authenticate users to provide your organization credentials and then give them access to things that they need to see. And this could be very helpful for things like password resets, right? I'm locked out of my account. You want to create some type of self-service capability. 
these power pages may be an option to do that. Very, very handy. Uh, where was I talking about? Okay, yeah. So let's talk about the dealership. So imagine that we sell bicycles, right? And with these bicycles, we have dealerships that are going to sell these bikes. And what we want to do is send these dealerships different promotions that we as a manufacturer are going to provide uh, for these bicycles, uh, maybe some rebate, a rebate program. Uh, maybe there is a incentive, incentive to sell a certain number of the bikes be, by a certain day. We can create now these power pages or these power pages uh, environments to where these users, you know, here I'm at dealership A. Right, so as a user from dealership A, I can come to the power page created for this dealership environment or just dealership portal, log in with my credentials for my dealership. Again, this is where you wanna be have a B2B. And you wanna do a B2B here versus a B2C, right? Because you want dealership A to manage the active or inactive accounts. Here I have a rep at dealership A, they log in, they get access to all the information, uh, all the policies, all the uh, rewards, all of the incentives for dealership A based on their location, their market segment, so on and so forth. Now, if I leave dealership A and maybe get hired, I mean, get po poached by dealership D, now I don't want my credentials for dealership A to still work. As soon as I leave the organization, this IT team will be responsible for deactivating this account. And then when they go to the same, again, they just went to a competitor, right, for a higher number, higher in bonuses, whatever the case may be. They went to a competitor. You don't want dealership A to information to still be displaying on this one portal. Again, you have one portal for all of your dealerships. Right. So this is why the B2B is important, because you put the ownership or the onus on the IT team at the dealership to deactivate their account. And they're going to do that anyway. It's the same account that they log into their email for dealership. A. It's the same account. They get access to their payroll and their benefits. As soon as they leave the org, they get disabled. They go to dealership D. Dealership D creates them a profile. That profile, again, is synchronized with this power page. They log in and they only see dealership D information, even though it's the exact same site by the manufacturer. Again, game, 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 game changer. Now, how, how easy is this? Is this really an uh, a, a, a easy story? Or, you know, do we believe the marketing hype? Like, don't believe the hype. Do we really believe the marketing hype? by Microsoft with power pages and creating one of these guys. And I really want to jump into it now, but this video is already so long. So in the next video, I will give you my personal take on very high, high level, very first glance on what I think this is, what I think the power pages is going to be provided by Microsoft is it as easy as the marketing hype says it's going to be? Does it have a lot of potential? Will it really solve the problem that we just discussed? That's coming up in the next video. Until then, I'll see you tomorrow.